Hello, um, I just wanted to uh, just provide a quick example on how you can deal with uh, after you download data from Open Data Philly. Sometimes some of the files will have these long numbers. Um, I've talked to a few people and it's not, it's nothing that I'm doing and it's probably nothing that you're doing. They've had the same problem. So um, one of the ways that you can do this, obviously you can go into the file and rename all of the files that go along with that particular um, you know, a shapefile has multiple files. You could rename of those, but that would probably take you two or three minutes. When you're working on a project like this, one of the things you can do is, you know, after you bring the file in, you can right mouse click and hit properties. And then in source, it'll just allow you to change the layer name. So this is supposed to be a district boundary. So I can just rename this district boundary. And then you can hit apply and then it'll be called district boundary you, it might seem like a minor thing but as projects get more complex and you get more files um, it's best to keep things as organized as possible the other thing that you could have done to make it permanent is you could do an export and then save features as and then essentially you just you're, you're going to create another file right so once you create the other file you can delete the one with the long name but you can rename it anything you want if you do a save vector layer as. Okay, so that that's that. Um, the other last thing that I want to show you is that if you want to like have some backgrounds behind your map, not for your final products. I don't want to see these. Um, it's one of the things I'll talk about in class next week. Is I don't want to see these as part of your map. They're not designed for. You know, 95% of the time, they're not designed to go behind your maps. You're going to learn how to make the map that goes behind it from using the vector data and doing it by hand. Um, but just to, you know, if you want to see what's going on where when you're looking at things, um, you can put different layers. And one of the ways that you can do that is you go to plugins. And I'm going to install this plugin called Quick Map Services. So you go to plugins, manage and install plugins. And then you're going to hit all, and then you're going to do quick, quick map services. You're going to click this. You're going to hit, um, mine's already installed, but there'll be a button that says install. You're going to install it. And then, and then once you install it, you can, it may or may not go right on. And if it doesn't, you can go in and turn it on basically. So here's like, for example, all of my plugins that I have. These are just extra tools that people have created. So these are my installed tools, and you can see that I have quick map services. So if you watch the icon right here, it's going to go on and off as I click that. Yeah, so it just went on. So what you can do then is once it's turned on, I'm not sure how many services you'll get. I get a lot when I do it, so I'm able to put any of these maps. So I can put... Um, Esri Ocean in, for example. That's the Esri Ocean layer. I can put in the open street map layers if I want. Here's the open street map layers. I can put in, again, I don't really want us using these uh, for our maps because the lettering and everything is not created for the geographic scale that you're mapping at. I will explain more of that. But once I show everyone this, I usually start to see these on the maps and I don't, I want us to be creating the maps almost 100% from uh, scratch. So that's just uh, another example. And then, you know, the other interesting thing is you could also put um, satellite data behind it as well. All right, so it just it makes it more interesting in the, in the mapping environment. Uh, that's it. Thanks.